Oh no. Even worse than his usual rubbish. Is that right? What's it supposed to be? Oh, is it the crack? The crack or the TARDIS? Oh! How cool! Why bring it to me? It's trying to get it to the doctor? Because it's obviously a message. And you can see who it's for. Okay, so it's Can't clearly for the doctor. It. My bet's the TARDIS then. If it's really clear that it is for the uh for the doctor. Storm Cage! The Doctor. River Song. You mean Doctor Song? The notebook. Give me that. Ooh. That kind of looks like the Starry Night. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is the Royal Oh! <laughs> and I'm the bloody queen. What are you doing here? It's about the Doctor, Mum. You met him once, didn't you? River Song, my here. crush. A message from the dawn of time. And no Whoa. one knows what it says because no one's ever translated it. You have the TARDIS. <laughs> Oh god. Oh, god. <laughs> Smirk. Hell Caesar. Oh, she's got the lipstick. Hi. Or he's got the lipstick. We are honored by your presence. Whoa, it is. So indeed it is the TARDIS that explodes. Oh, the Pandorica opens. Loving the score. Look at that shot. Look at River's outfit, man. I'm so distracted. It's a Pandora girl. Okay, More that's than just a, a fairy tale. There was a goblin or a trickster or a warrior. A nameless, terrible thing soaked in the blood of a billion galaxies. The most feared being in all the cosmos. Pandora's box with all the worst things in the Oh world. yeah, once you open that. That was my favorite book when I was a kid. What's wrong? Your favorite school topic, your favorite story. Never ignore a coincidence. Unless you're busy, in which case always ignore a coincidence. Hmm. <laughs> the Romans. Oh, uh, what? No. How come they're not showing his face? Are you proposing to someone? I'm sorry? Oh boy. I found this in your pocket. A friend of mine, someone I lost. Would you mind? A friend of mine, it's weird, eh? I feel. I don't know something. Nothing is ever forgotten, not completely. And if something can be remembered, it can come back. Yeah. Let's see. Bang. Doctor? Oh, it's gonna be the person. River and that... Is it Captain Jack? Who are you? Oh! Hello, Amy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my god. Okay. Yes. Does he not realize? Half an hour should be fine. Okay, <laughs> Romans. Good. I was just wishing for Romans. Did she miss me? She doesn't even remember you, my friend. <laughs> Suntar. Jeez. You're surrounded. Have you wow. got a plan? Yes, now hurry up and get the TARDIS here. I need equipment. Who's got Pandorica? Answer, I do. Next question. Who's coming to take it from me? Come on! Wow. Me. No plan, no backup, no weapons worth a damn. So, if you're sitting up there in your silly little spaceship with all your silly little guns, and you've got any plans on taking the Pandorica tonight, just remember who's standing in your way. Remember! Let somebody else try first. Hey! Something's gonna happen here. Surely. What's the matter with you? 
They're still yeah. Is it safe up there? Not remotely, but it's fresh. Shh. Oh, no. Oh, you're the guy, yeah? That, that when I did the sorty thing. Stabby. She doesn't remember me. Hmm. How could she not remember me? You got erased, my friend. Because you never existed. Ah, the opening. She's so lovely. Oh my okay. god. <laughs> Whoa. Silence Whoa. Will fall. Why have you brought me here? Wow. Oh my goodness. The tension. Oh my god. Okay, focus, focus. Amy's room. Whoa. A place more deadly and more powerful and more impatient than their tiny minds can imagine. Oh. Whoa. So it's kind of like Pandora's box then. Rory. <laughs> Strange name for a Roman. Nothing. It's just. Not what you expect Romans to be called. <laughs> What's it short for? Veronicus. You're crying. Right. Doctor, how is this possible? Something's using her memories, Amy's memories. Yeah. Wow. Doctor, that centurion. Oh. Uh, costume party? It's me. It's a trap. It has to be. They used Amy to construct a scenario you'd believe to get close to you. Oh. Who do that? What for? It doesn't make sense. Silence will fall. Oh, is it that? Silence will fall. Can't remember the name, but I came back. You're crying because you remember me. From Ledworth, my boyfriend. <laughs> How could I ever forget you? You've got wow, one. beautiful lighting there. The Pandora cart is ready. What, you mean it's open? You have been scanned. Scanned by what? A box? Your limits and capacities have been extrapolated. <laughs> Whoa. The Pandora cart what? is ready. You doing? Ready for what? Oh, they're gonna put him in there. This is you, and you are staying. They all came together. No. Wow, they all came together to put the doctor in there. Hey, you lot. Working together. Yeah, that's and something. Lions. How is that possible? The cracks in the skin of the universe. All reality is threatened. All universes will be deleted. And you, you've come to me for help. No! We will save the universe from you! From me? The whole universe will never have existed. Please listen to me! The TARDIS is exploding right now and I'm the only one who can stop it! Listen! River's in there, wow. Please don't end. Don't end like this. Oh, 
Okay, okay, look at that. The first penultimate episode of the Moffat era. Um, you know, it's all been set up throughout the season. It's all been leading up to this. A breadcrumb trail has been there throughout the episodes, right? The, the whole crack aspect of it all. Uh, and of course, as expected, um, and as essentially confirmed uh, for a few episodes at this point, uh, yeah, Amy, Amy Pond is the center of all of this essentially um but yeah you know this uh, this lead up you know Moffat's first uh season as a showrunner uh you know his dark fantasy enchanting take um on the first season and perhaps of course you know going into the next few seasons as well um yeah I've got to say I really enjoyed that episode um you know as far as second last episodes go that might be my favorite out of all five seasons you know it's certainly top two I mean, it really could be my favorite. It really could be. And I say top two for now uh, because, you know, I can't quite remember all of the penultimate episodes in detail uh, right at this moment. But, you know, uh, the Davies era, as you might have noticed, you know, a lot of my favorite episodes used to be the episodes that used to be in the middle or the midsection, maybe one of the earlier episodes, one of the few episodes before the two-part finale. But the two-part finales, you know, more often than not, I felt like they didn't quite do it for me. You know, um, um, you know, really recently, um, now these are the specials, but again, Davy specials, the two-part finale, the end of time, part one and two. Yeah, you know, it didn't really quite do it for me other than, you know, portions of those episodes, uh, especially, the, you know, the final chunk, um, Tenants Goodbye. Uh, yeah, those two parties didn't quite really do it for me. And then, you know, I'm sure, you know, I, I mean, I certainly noticed, and then I'm sure many of you noticed that there was a bit of a pattern there, right? That by the time I got to the two-part finales, I was kind of saying the same things over and over again, you know? Didn't quite enjoy the episode or the finale as a whole, but I like parts of those finales. But here, you know, I've got to say, Moffat really knocked that one out of the park, didn't he? As the first penultimate episode of his showrunner uh, run, essentially, I mean, yes, of course, um, given the whole buildup and the conclusion of this um, episode, yes, there's certainly possibility of potential plot holes that could come into play. Um, you know, it could be a bit convoluted, right? The possibility is there, of course. That possibility is always there, uh, given the nature of a two-part finale. But, you know, I've got to say, this is not the type of feeling I was having after a penultimate episode of the Davies era. A lot of times I, I felt quite, you know, deflated or eh, almost indifferent. You know, that that feeling of, eh, that was okay. You know, nothing special. This, this, you know, even if it, it's not like the greatest episode or anything, it was really, really entertaining and engaging right till the end. And I think, of course, the, the pacing played a part. Um, and, you know, uh, a lot of great character focus. Um, and, you know, the final sequence... Um, you don't really see a sequence like that in the Davies era, do you? Um, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to, you know, pick a side here or anything. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. You know, I'm not, you know, I've seen it. I've seen that some fans are, you know, firmly on that side of the ship, right? The Davies uh, era. And then some are certainly on this side, the Moffat era. And then, you know, I've seen some of the back and forth in my comments, um, but yeah, you know, uh, my honest take, I enjoyed that perhaps more than any of the Davies penultimate episodes. Uh, again, you know, can't quite remember the details of all of them going all the way back to um, uh, season one or series one, uh, Eccleston's season. That was actually quite good. Yeah. The first penultimate episode, I, I remember that being really quite good. But going back to my initial point about the, the final sequence, you know, I love the tone of that. Right? It's a somber tone. Uh, you know, if there's any other uh, fans of Lost, I'm sure uh, a few of you have seen Lost. Um, it really reminded me of some of the scenes from Lost. Uh, and I'm speaking of, you know, the final moment as it's kind of cutting back and forth and showing uh, how things are kind of being left off for all four of these uh, major characters at this point. You know, be it River Song, be it the Doctor, Rory and Amy. And of course, all four of them are in quite the situation as um, the episode kind of signs off um, on that cliffhanger. And as silence falls, 
uh, that was quite the scene. That was quite the scene. You know, I was kind of speechless as that's play as as that is playing out on the screen. Um, uh, yeah, and it fades to black to be continued. I thought, you know, I thought it was a fantastic ending. You know, by the end of it, the doctor is locked uh, um, in into this, you know, prison essentially, right? Uh, the Pandorica, uh, or as Amy mentioned, Pandora's box, right? Uh, and then, uh, and the River Song is essentially about to die, right? I mean, of course, all of us know that you know they're going to get out of all these situations. River Song's not going to die. Uh, I know that for a fact, right? I know that for a fact, given you know the setup and uh, her storyline and the fact that I've seen her die uh, in her first you know appearance, essentially or second, uh, technically since it was a two-parter. Um, so yeah, she's not going to die. I know that. But even so, it's still quite the situation that they've put her in uh, as this cliffhanger. And then of course, the doctor's locked away in this Pandorica prison, right? Uh, there's quite a fantastic shot of it closing and the doctor just, you know, yelling out, screaming out as all of his enemies <laughs> look on. How about that? You know, I thought that was actually quite a unique take by Buffett. You see, he takes a big swing. I mean, he brings in all of the rogues gallery, right? As many as he could. But, you know, I like that it was a different approach. He took a unique approach to this. Uh, though, of course, you know, the Jadoon isn't really an enemy. Uh, or you can't really consider the Jadoon part of the Doctor's rogues gallery or anything. But, you know, it's a situation that kind of brought all of these, I don't know, unlikely uh, uh, beings together, right? for common cause as the saviors of the universe. As misguided as it might be, they believe they are the saviors of the universe. Um, you know, that's that's how crazy the situation is. That these, these creatures, these aliens, these um, beings kind of had to put their differences aside for the time being at least, and, you know, focus on the doctor. Um, of course, for many of them, you know, this mutual hatred of the doctor kind of plays plays into it all, right? Um, so I suppose from that angle, it's not that far-fetched to see them all come together, right? <laughs> uh, again, not not everyone is a friend of the Doctor, you know, from another perspective, you know, there's a lot of hatred for the Doctor. But of course, they have no idea that River Song uh, is someone who can fly the TARDIS, right? Someone who could drive the TARDIS. So, you know, they are so sure that it's because of the because of the doctor that the TARDIS does end up exploding. Though of course, you know, there's still a bit of a mystery there, right? The reasoning behind the explosion that happens inside the TARDIS, and you know, who kind of takes over the TARDIS, right? Um, River Song kind of loses control because someone takes over, right? Someone is kind of tapping into it, um, and she's kind of trapped in there. And again, you know, speaking of River Song, Alex Kingston. I mean, every single time, it's such it's such a you know pleasant experience to have her back on the show. Um, you know, as you can tell, I adore River Song. Right? I mean, it's pretty easy to see. I've got quite a major crush on Alex Kingston and you know her portrayal of River Song. I mean, that is an incredibly beautiful woman. Uh, you know, I, I cannot hide it. I cannot hide it. I think Alex Kingston has such a commanding presence as River Song. Um, there's this maturity uh, that she brings um, to the screen. Uh, you know, it's this reassuring maturity. And I'm, you know, uh, I'm guessing that's one of the reasons I do find her so attractive as well. Not that, you know, that's important. That, you know, she has to be attractive uh, to, the, to the audience or anything. You know, just it's a personal it's a personal thing, you know, it's a personal opinion on the matter. Um, I cannot lie, I do find her really attractive. And these are some of the um, attributes that really make her attractive to me, at least. You know, again, that maturity, uh, that reassuring maturity, uh, that, you know, that screen presence, the commanding screen presence. Uh, she's got that gravitas, right? Uh, again, like I mentioned the last time in that two-parter, you know, she's like the doctor's equal. Right, uh, an intellectual equal to the doctor. You know, they can kind of go toe to toe, not in this, you know, not in the, you know, fighting sense, but toe to toe as in, you know, they can bounce off each other. They have great chemistry, Matt Smith and uh, Alex Kingston, and even those two characters, River Song and the Doctor, they're just fantastic together. They really are. Um, it, it's a totally different dynamic, 
You know, it's a totally different dynamic from the Doctor and his companions. Usually the companions are much younger, uh, but in Alex Kingston and River Song, you have a really unique and fantastic uh, relationship. Though I have seen something a bit similar uh, through Donna Noble, who I adore, of course. Um, but yeah, you know, I've got to say, River Song is easily one of my favorites of the entire show, as far as characters go. Um, and as far as companions go, you know, I guess you can kind of count her as a companion, right? Not an official companion in the sense that she's always there, but, you know, Jack is a companion. Uh, Mickey, companion. All these people are essentially companions, right? Um, so, yeah, as far as companions go, right, the, the friends of the Doctor uh, and different relationships of the Doctor, River Song is right up there, you know. Uh, of course, the Doctor uh, himself is one of my favorites, River Song is perhaps right behind, right behind the Doctor, or equal footing even. You know, I really do like uh, River Song. I do, and I'm loving that. You know, I'm I'm getting her um, much more often now, right? As as expected, really. Uh, so I, I saw her twice. Now I get to see her twice again. So four times uh, during uh, series five. So I'm hoping it kind of continues. Um, uh, because because still, you know, it's still a bit of an unknown. Um, I still need a lot of backstory on River Song. And I'm sure, I'm sure once I get to it, uh, you know, episode by episode, uh, it is going to be something quite jaw-dropping. It is going to be a few more shock moments um, as the reveals kind of come at me. And I'm so, so happy that I get to see the Matt Smith and Alex Kingston combination um, many more times many more times as this is the first uh, series for uh, Matt Smith. Uh, and then of course, Capaldi. At some point I'm going to see Capaldi in River Song. So that's quite exciting as well, but that's down the line. That's really down the line. Um, but yeah, River Song, you know, the opening sequence, the cold open of this episode was kind of breathless, right? Quite the cold open, kind of tied everything back together, you know, kind of took us through those setups from the earlier episodes. Um, uh, you know, she breaks out of Storm Cage. Um, uh, of course, I see uh, Churchill again. I see the android. Can't quite remember his name, but, you know, love to see him around still. Um, I see Vincent. That was quite the surprise. That was really quite the surprise. I did not expect him to show up again. But I do have to say, and again, this is an opinion. This is a preference thing. I... <laughs> I don't, th I don't think I like that they kind of brought Vincent back in for that reason, or they utilized that character for that reason, right? There, I mean, there's almost an implication here that, you know, he's essentially at his end um, at that point. And the implication being perhaps, you know, this knowledge, this premonition, uh, this, um, this vision he's had of the TARDIS exploding um, might be the thing that kind of drives him over the edge, right? I don't know if I like that implication. You know, again, uh, you know, I would love to get your opinions on the matter. Um, my opinion, I, I didn't really like that. I didn't like that they brought him back in. I would have preferred if they just left it. If they just left it. Um, but again, you know, beyond that, understandable. Completely understandable. You know, this premonition, this vision he's having of his friends, right? Knowing that they're going to die, you know, in, in his mind. Right, the, the TARDIS exploding, right? And again, you know, to him, some of this imagery, uh, these visions are kind of so vivid, right? So yes, of course, um, that certainly, you know, makes sense that he is really, really on edge. He's really quite disturbed and unsettled. Um, yeah, so, I mean, of course, you know, from that angle, it's understandable. I just... You know, if you if you're gonna ask me, I say just leave that out. You know, don't don't touch that um, again. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, I, I suppose that's my nitpick out of the different scenes that kind of you know go back to in the beginning. But I love how the painting kind of goes through the years, the the decades, the the centuries, right? Uh, makes it all the way to the future. Right, Liz Seven shows up as well, and then of course the River Song has to time travel, and she does get that. Uh, I can't remember the exact name for it, but again, you know, they're they're kind of hinting at that being uh, Captain Jack's. But you know, as the the blue alien guy opens the box, you know, it's clear that the hand is in there too. 
Um, you know, so maybe it isn't uh, Captain Jack. Uh, you'll have to let me know. Um, but you know, anytime they mention a handsome time agent, I believe um, the term was, you, you know, your mind immediately goes to Captain Jack. Uh, in fact, you know, later on in the episode, I thought maybe that. Uh, soldier might be Captain Jack himself. You know, for some reason, I kept thinking any sort of Rory return or return of Rory, uh, I just felt like maybe that would be in the grand finale in the last episode. Uh, but no, it happened here. It happened here. Yeah, I, I suppose a bit of a brain fart moment because I, you know, I was just expecting Captain Jack to show up. Maybe, you know, I thought maybe, you know, this could be the first time Moffat gets to kind of bring him in. Uh, but then, you know, once you start thinking about it, it would really make no sense for Captain Jack to be there, right? Uh, but, you know, as I'm on the topic of Rory, you know, of course, lovely to see Rory again. I really, I really appreciate that character. Um, again, it's a bit of a heartbreaking moment, right? As he realizes Amy doesn't remember him. But then on top of that, he's not actually Rory. He's actually this simulated sentient being, right? Um, that's kind of been created from Amy's mind. But in that sense... He is the most, you know, detailed and accurate out of all of them because the rest, because the rest of it, you know, be it the Pandorica based on the Pandora's box, be it those uh, Roman soldiers based on her, uh, you know, books at home. Um, those are all out of other things, right? Things that are not really real uh, in her mind, essentially. Rory has been real. He's a real person, someone she knows inside and out. Um, so, in, you know, for that, I, I believe for that reason, uh, you know, it was so accurate, the, the simulation essentially, uh, or the recreation of Rory, that it was enough for her to actually kind of, you know, break through and start to remember Rory, right? I mean, there's a beautiful line um, uh, during the episode, you know, and it's Matt Smith, who, who actually, you know, delivers quite a bit of fantastic dialogue in this episode. There's a fantastic speech moment. Fantastic, phenomenal speech moment. Though, of course, you know, later, as some more new information comes to light, it's kind of recontextualized for us, the audience. Right? <laughs> the dramatic irony of that is quite thick, of course. But, you know, at the moment, the doctor didn't know. He was bluffing, and he put on a show. You know, he certainly put on a show at Stonehenge. D you know, to me, it even kind of felt like a concert. You know, live from Stonehenge, Matt Smith, the doctor, right? Him with the mic. Um, you know, there's lights. Uh, he's got an audience. Uh, I thought it was a fantastic speech and fantastic, you know, acting on display by Matt Smith. I mean, the delivery is just fantastic. And I think some of the photography in that scene. Uh, and again, it looks pretty clear that that's at Stonehenge, right? Uh, you, you, I mean, it's not CGI. You could tell it's the real deal. Uh, though I'm, I'm sure, you know, they had to get a lot of, uh, they had to, you know, kind of jump through a lot of hoops to get permission to film there. I'm sure they had to kind of, you know, recreate uh, Stonehenge as well, right? Uh, be it on a soundstage or on a set uh, as well. But yeah, you could tell, you could tell, you know, you could tell just by the photography as well as they enter uh, Stonehenge. And I'm speaking of River Song, Amy, and Doctor the doctor kind of going through, right? There's a beautiful shot of them kind of, you know, walking right into the middle. Um, yeah, you know, that that in itself is so cool. It's just so cool. But going back to his speech, I love the nature of it. The fact that all of his rogues gallery is up there and they're just kind of playing along, right? They're playing a part. They're letting him have this moment so he sticks around, right? <laughs> I, just, I really love that. I really love that. Um, you know, um, I mean, the speech itself is just fantastic. The delivery is uh, top notch. You know, I love Matt Smith in this. Um, I adore Matt Smith. You know, he is just fantastic. I have no complaints. Uh, I really do love him. But, you know, I just love, I really love the dramatic irony of this that, you know, they are up there um, just kind of playing along, letting him have this moment. You know, they're kind of letting him feed his ego almost. Though, of course, you know, it's not as simple as that either. The doctor is bluffing. Right? He is bluffing. He's taking that chance. And again, some of that imagery, some of the CGI is fantastic. You know, some of those low angle shots of the doctor. Um, and then you see in the sky all of the different ships, right? Uh, tens of thousands of ships uh, kind of gathering, right? Uh, this unlikely alliance 
<laughs> you know, again, there is some memorable imagery in this episode, right? Uh, you know, there's a one shot of all of them kind of standing side by side, shoulder to shoulder, as the Doctor is locked in to the Pandorica. And, you know, I thought he, he was so great in that moment. You know, the panic, um, you know, the desperation. Uh, as, you know, he realizes, oh my god, I'm about to get locked in here. And they legitimately think that if I'm locked in there, the TARDIS is not going to explode. But of course, they don't know that, you know, River Song can fly the TARDIS. And that River Song is someone quite special. You know, someone really special, that's for sure. You know, see, that much I can infer for sure that she is really special. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of shocking moments or reveals or jaw-dropping moments down the line in terms of backstory but yeah um yeah i thought matt smith was just top notch river song was top notch in that scene as well you know she uh sorry uh, alex kingston was top notch in that scene in the tardis you know the panic the desperation and then uh, you know subsequently and ultimately the resignation at the end i believe uh, you know the line of dialogue was uh i'm sorry my love uh something along those lines yeah uh, but of course, you know, River Song is not going to die. The Doctor is also not going to be stuck in the Pandorica. Of course, the Doctor is going to break out of Pandorica. And, you know, in fact, I think it's probably going to be really early on, right? Uh, in the episode, because of course, the Doctor needs to kind of fix all of this, right? And now, in the final episode of the season of the series, Series 5, I think now uh, some good old time traveling is going to come into play. And this goes all the way back to the first two-parter of River Song. That really strange moment as clearly a different doctor or a doctor from the future shows up, right? Uh, as Amy has her eyes shut in the forest. Um, it's a different doctor, you know, different demeanor. He's got the jacket on. Um, so I think I, I might finally get an explanation for that. Uh, and I, I certainly expect a lot of time traveling in this final episode because to fix something like this, the doctor needs to time travel to a lot of different points, right? Um, so yeah, you know, that that certainly is quite the exciting setup for the next episode. I'm really quite excited. Like I mentioned, you know, some of the Davies era two-parters or the first of a uh, two-part finale, the penultimate episode, didn't quite have me this excited. But, you know, going back to the fantastic opening sequence, uh, River Song, you know, in the cold open, I loved her costume changes, right? And, you know, the hair, the makeup, I loved the transitions from different time periods. And, you know, she's really getting to flex her range. Uh, you know, she could really rock any look. I mean, as you saw, and, you know, I suppose the playful term these days is simping. I was really simping for River Song. Her in those outfits, the hair... Uh, she, she's just stunning, man. <laughs> I'm really crushing hard. Um, I mean, there's a few moments I, my jaw kind of dropped. <laughs> I mean, this episode had a really fun action adventure, uh, feel to it all, didn't it? Right? Indiana Jones, the mummy. And I'm speaking of the original mummy, um, the nineties mummy, Brendan Fraser, um, a bit of Star Wars perhaps. Uh, but you know, her costume, I, I felt like it was inspired, um, by some of these, um, you know, films I've just mentioned. I mean, those jaw-dropping brown pants. <laughs> um, you could see a bit of Han Solo inspiration there, perhaps. Right, and then maybe a bit of Princess Leia in that, you know, beautiful um, coat she had on or jacket. Um, yeah, you know, and then, of course, she had the, the black bodysuit. Oh, oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, you know, uh, again, costume design, set design, uh, um, photography, uh, the acting... The incredible score by Murray Gold never disappoints, you know, never disappoints. Always just incredible music on display. It really is a treat. I'll never get tired of saying it, but Murray Gold is so crucial to Doctor Who. I mean, it's really clear to the Doctor at this point and the audience as well uh, that, you know, that big empty house that <laughs> Amelia Pond, uh, young Amelia Pond used to live in, the, who I, I think I have a good chance of seeing in the next episode as well. You know, like I said, I really expect a lot of time traveling going on. Um, and there, there's still a few standout moments from um, the 11th hour that that are still kind of um, a bit puzzling, right? So maybe I'll get a few answers for those moments. But yeah, you know, Amelia Pond by herself, uh, you know, ultimately she forgot her parents, right? They, they got taken by the crack, I guess. Um, they were forgotten because of the crack, uh, erased essentially. Uh, I, I guess the same thing can be applied to the ducks in the duck pond <laughs> in the 11th hour. 
And, you know, speaking of uh, some fantastic dialogue, you know, the doctor is kind of describing this being, essentially, right? That essentially ends up sounding kind of like the doctor. As you saw, you know, through my reaction, I was like, okay, you're describing someone that could be yourself, actually. You know, he's he's speaking of, you know, a goblin, a trickster, uh, a warrior, uh, you know, a nameless, terrible being soaked in the blood of a billion galaxies. Oof. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then, you know, he kind of goes into about how, you know, this being falls to your world and kind of destroying it, right? The oncoming storm, as, you know, he calls himself. So, yeah, you know, he, that description really fit the, fit the bill. You know, it, I was really starting to think, okay, he's kind of describing himself. That moment Rory kind of questions or, you know, he kind of posed the question, you know, why am I here? You know, the doctor himself also doesn't understand it. But his response to Rory, I thought it was just so lovely. Um, it was such a, I don't know, it was a beautiful response. Um, you know, the, the talk of miracles, that it's one of the theories, at least, um, that, you know, he spent like 900 years, he hasn't seen one. But, you know, this, this could be it. This could be it. Uh, sometimes the universe is a strange thing, you know. I mean, the universe is a big place. It's impossible to understand everything. But, you know, this could be one of those moments, right? Um, and I believe he said this would do me, right? Uh, so I loved how he uh, doesn't complicate it any further for this Rory, even though it's not really Rory. But of course, since, you know, this is someone Amy is so close to and knows inside and out, it's an actual person in her life um, for a long, long time. Uh, you know, this recreation, the simulation, uh, it actually ended up playing a major part in her remembering. And then, of course, that kind of ties in perfectly with um, that beautiful line of dialogue, right? If it can be remembered, it can come back. I think that right there is a fantastic setup, um, perhaps for the next episode as well. If it can be remembered, it can come back. Um, so yeah, certainly, let's certainly put a pin in that. Um, and, you know, I love how Amy slowly starts to remember Rory. Um, and, you know, even though Rory is uh, pleading with Amy to just just run, you know, because he's afraid he is going to kill her. He knows, you know, ultimately he's going to end up killing her if she doesn't leave. She didn't give up on him, right? Uh, yes, ultimately she got shot. And it appears that she might be dead or she's about to die, essentially, um, on, her, on her last legs, essentially. Of course, she's not going to die. I'm sure something's going to happen and she's going to end up living and she'll play her part in the finale. You know, she's kind of lost Rory twice, right? Uh, so far in series five. Um, and then now you see that Rory kind of loses Amy. Um, but yeah, you know, I think I think that's all I have for this one. Uh, I think I think that was just fantastic. You know, everything's set up perfectly for a fantastic finale to perfectly bookend series five, right? Uh, fantastic opener in the 11th hour, one of the best episodes of Doctor Who, one of my favorites. And then, you know, the potential is there to bookend uh, with a fantastic finale. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm really quite excited. I'm really quite excited for that one. So if you enjoyed this, consider dropping a like, consider dropping some comments, give me your thoughts. Um, if you're interested in full length or perhaps early access to the next episode right now, consider checking out the Patreon page. The link is in the description, in the pinned comment. So thank you for joining me for this one and thank you for your time as time is quite precious. Um, and I hope to see you again soon for the next one. So until then, take it easy. Mm -hmm.